Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to do another cooler video which I'm going to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So let's have a look at which cooler I'm going to add to the League. I'm going to add the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. The Dark Rock Core is a slightly more expensive cooler. It competes with the likes of the Noctua cooler of a few previously. It's a 250 watt um, cooler which means it should be able to handle um, beefier CPUs. Also, because it's be quiet, you'd expect it to be whisper quiet. So installation wise, it's not the most difficult to install, but it's also not the easiest to install. Um, you have to create a backplate, which you then pass through the motherboard. You attach a frame to that um, uh, backplate, the prongs that come through. And then once you've done that, then you put the cooler in place and then you put a bar across. And then that bar then screws in to protruding um, bolts that come through uh, the two sides of the frame. Once you screw those down, the cooler is snugly in place. It's a bit of a, a bit of a laborious task, but it's not the most difficult. All right, so now we've got the uh, gone through the installation. Why don't we have a look at how the cooler did in the Cooler League and how it compared to the rest of the coolers? So base temps, the Be Quiet Dot Rock Four. Base temp was 30 degrees Celsius. This is the lowest of the um, temperatures that we got from any of the coolers so far. I keep the room I test these things in at a, a, a set temperatures, so you know that's a pretty decent base temp. Base sound, as I said earlier, this is a be quiet cooler, so you'd expect it to be quiet, and to be fair, it didn't let the side down. It started at 33.8 decibels, which is, is equally quiet as the Noctua cooler, which means those two were the quietest coolers that we've looked at so far. The average Cinebench score, uh, the average for the Be Quiet cooler was 47.89, which is one of the top scores so far and actually only is a few points behind the Thermaltake Contact 12. It's higher than both the Noctua and Cooler Master Hyper 212 coolers. Max temp wise, the max temp that we saw over the runs was 69 Celsius, which is equal to the Noctua cooler and only four degrees higher than the Cooler Master Hyper 212. So it did really well. Max sound wise, again, I'm expecting this to be a, a really good performer and it didn't let me down. The highest decibel I saw over all of the runs, I think was 35.1 and the average at 35.1, which is just fantastic going. So here's a reminder of the scoring ranges. Now, I'm erring on the point of actually expanding these ranges, but I have all the data in place for each of the coolers because I'm starting to see that a lot of the coolers are now starting to compact into very short spaces in terms of the scores. But I'm going to leave it as for now. What I've put in place is a tiebreaker for the max temp and then the max noise when you've got the same point scored for any of the coolers. So with that in mind, let's have a look how the uh, Be Quiet cooler compared to all the others. The Be Quiet cooler came in with exactly the same score as the Cooler Master Hyper 212 and the Noctua NHU-12S. Now, the Cooler Master is on top of the pile because it had the um, it was the quietest cooler and it was the best performing cooler at a higher temperature. So the Be Quiet cooler has actually come in at a good second place. So really, you can't argue with this cooler it performs really really well so as i just said this cooler is a really fantastic performer it competed with all the top level coolers that i've looked at so far for cooling the 10700k that i have in my test bed i'm very impressed with the cooler i uh, have i've got it on the test bed and left it on the test bed which is just behind me it runs so quiet i've got it running right now and you can't hear it at all it's just so so nice and quiet the one thing I would say that works in uh, it's a disadvantage if you compared it to, say, the Cooler Master Hyper 212, it's a tad more expensive. Well, actually, it's quite a chunk more expensive. But the looks of this thing, it's just beautiful. It's such a nice cooler. I'm so impressed with how the cooler looks. I think you'd be hard-pressed to not look at this as a serious option for, cool, uh, for cooling any CPU that you'd throw in there. I think this would have, handle everything outside of an overclock from a 10700K all the way up to a Ryzen 9. All right, I hope you found that information useful. As always, please subscribe, and if you like this video, uh, please like it. Also, don't forget to click the bell icon to be uh, notified of future content because I've got more cooler videos coming. And as always, take care.